You're all a bunch of fucking assholes. Hi, welcome to my channel. For this video, I thought we'd do something a bit different. Um, recently I've been on Twitter and I fell down the hole of reading Am I the Asshole? And I just thought, you know what, a fun series for this channel might be to do a Find the Biggest Asshole series where basically I find like a couple Am I the Assholes, we go through it and then we decide who is the asshole, who is not. And at the end of the video we crown someone the biggest asshole. I don't know, it was just something that we can work on. So yeah, um, this is the first video in the series. We're gonna try it out. Um, you guys let me know what you think of it. And yeah, let's let's talk about it. So we have the first one. Am I the asshole for walking out of a wedding I was a part of and ruining the day? Let's find out. I dated my ex-boyfriend, John, for four years and got serious enough where we started planning for our future together. Wedding, kids, etc. I thought we were happy, but last year he dumped me pretty much suddenly. I tried to figure out what went wrong, but he said it was personal and that I should respect his space. Mm, okay. During this time, my best friend Stacy and her fiance Tom were my rocks, letting me crash at their place and just being overwhelmingly supportive and loving. When Stacy asked me to be her maid of honor, I thought it was a no-brainer and happily. I thought it was a no-brainer and happily took on the task. Fast forward to what happened this weekend. The morning of the wedding, Tom asked me to meet him for breakfast super early in the AM before all the festivities. I thought it was weird but assumed he maybe wanted me to pass something on Stacy. What happened instead was that Tom let me know that a few days prior, Stacy admitted to him that she had an affair with John. Oh! Okay. Which um was what led to breakup he said stacy wanted to come clean to start their marriage fresh and that he was forgiving her to move forward that's a lot first of all that is a lot that's crazy she waited to the wedding day i mean that's very techy but yeah he had gone back and forth between telling me and finally decided to spill the beans i guess he had expected me to forgive stacy too because the affair was so long ago the opposite pretty much happened and I just walked out the wedding. I ended up causing a huge mess because I was running the whole show. Stacy made me do everything so she didn't know what was happening at certain times or who to call. Not only that, but everyone realised that the MOH, Maid of Honour, wasn't there. She had headshots and bios of the party on her wedding page and news of the affair eventually got out because her cousin knew John. Damn. Stacy and John have both been slandering me online now, saying that I ruined their once in a lifetime moments. Some of their friends are on their side, saying that I should have handled the situation more privately and at least stuck out the wedding since it was so last minute. I personally don't know what Tom expected, but either way, I've been getting bombarded with texts and I've heard that Stacy has been so upset she had to take time off work, which does make me feel like an asshole, especially since I've been ignoring her calls. Fuck you! <laughs> You are home. Girl, get yourself together. You are not the arsehole. Sarah is a piece of shit and a hoe. And her boyfriend or fiance or husband or whatever needs to stand the fuck up. I think what could have been done better was Tom. Yeah, her fiance Tom not telling her the morning of the wedding. If he wanted everything to run, run smoothly. Because if you're going to tell her, you have to run the risk of this happening. You can't tell someone something like that and expect them to take things the way you took it. You know what I mean? Like, people are different and people react to things differently. So I personally wouldn't say she's the arsehole. I would say Stacey's an arsehole for sleeping with John. And I would say Tom's the arsehole for telling her the day of the wedding is when he knew that she was literally everything to do with the wedding. Does that make sense? Bear in mind, oh, now we haven't even heard an apology from Sarah. Girl, fuck you. Let's see what um, people in the comments think. Hard not the arsehole on this one. Yep, I agree. Was walking out of the wedding day a nice thing to do? Not particularly, but what earth did they expect to happen by telling you? Exactly! And on the wedding day, they knew that they were playing with fire, they chose when to tell you this information, simply walking out because, whoa Nelly, I bet there were a ton of conflicting emotions. Was pretty adult. You didn't cause a huge scene, you simply extracted yourself from the situation, not the arsehole. Yeah, I would agree. 
<laughs> someone said I would have pretended to not, I would have pretended to forgive her and then given a hell of a maid of honor speech, but I'm petty like that. See, that would have been an asshole thing to do. But her removing herself from the situation is a hard not the asshole. Yeah, like you feel how you feel, and that's valid. Another comment. Um, so wait, your best friend had an affair with your then fiance. He breaks up with you over it, cancelling your happy ever after. She asked you to be her maid of honor. But everyone is upset with you because you found out she slept with your fiance and you can't suck it up for a few hours to make her day great to start her happily ever after not the arsehole not only that the best friend took her in and made her feel better after the fact that she cheated on said fiance keeping your enemies close they say yeah stacy's a huge arsehole in this one actually i just deeped you said um a serious ex-boyfriend and your best friend Stacy. No, that's crazy. Now your best friend, your best friend Stacy is unhinged. So she knew that she caused the breakup and then she was complimenting you all the time. Now she's the huge arsehole. I'm so sorry. Someone else said another not the arsehole. You didn't even have the guts. She didn't even have the guts to tell you herself. That's true. She has a fiance tell her. The friend who agrees with them are also terrible people. Yeah, it's a good thing you took yourself out of that situation because. It's a terrible circle all around. Stacey should be upset because she built this for herself. Not only did she betray your trust, she betrayed her fiance and then expected, she didn't even have the guts to tell you what she did. And then expected everything to be awesome for her wedding day. That's crazy. She's very Delulu and she got what she deserved. Okay, there's another comment. This last comment we'll go through. Stacey and Tom have both been slandering me online now, saying that I ruined the once in a lifetime moment. No, Stacey. You ruined your once in a lifetime moment by cheating on Tom and fucking your boy fucking her boyfriend Tom just before the wedding. You cheat on your husband, you cheat on your maid of honor, you betrayed everyone close to you. That's very true. I'd copy and paste that everywhere on the internet. <laughs> Every online slur that I reposted this a thousand times each time she posted something about me. That is actually, yeah, that's the best way to handle it, to be honest. Remind everyone that she's the one who built this one herself. She like fucked up majorly, and the fact that she has the audacity to play the victim. That's crazy. I'm glad she got herself out of the situation. But yeah, we have a definite not the arsehole here. We have a definite not the arsehole here. Am I the arsehole for allowing the police into my home? Let's find out. So over the summer, my husband's son, Jay, stays with his mom. He's 16, he gets home and gets everything ready for school. I notice his mom gave him a new gaming system and I don't say anything as he puts it in his room. It's not uncommon for his mom to buy him things. The police show up at my house and ask to see both me and Jay, his daddy's working. I let the police in and they asked about his gaming system and I tell him, sure, I saw him unpack it. Once Jay gets in the living room, I'm told it's stolen. I freak out. I yell at Jay and the police arrest him and tell me I can come get him after the booking process. It will be a few hours. Wait, what? I let them take my J, okay, and the gaming system. I'm so overwhelmed with everything. I call my husband and he starts yelling at me because I let the police into the house and take Jay. Rightfully. This is a 16-year-old child. I get an earful about it and my husband goes to the police station and it takes a long time for him to come home with Jay. My husband sends Jay to his room and yells at me about how I let this happen. I should have not let them into the house and I should not have told them Jay was home. I say, why? He asks like it's common sense. He asked like it was common since and I should have found out more information. He calls me names like stupid and naive. The fight sends into me say how I'm supposed to know how to act. I was taught better to cover up for a criminal. My husband says Jay is not a criminal. I pointed out he was literally just arrested for I pointed out he was literally just arrested for freaking stealing. My husband told me to get out. I'm staying with my sister and her husband right now because of this. They are in just as much shock as me because they would never thought to be rude to the police not even allowed them in i think honestly this is a race thing i think there's there's a racial element here involved her naivety might come from the fact that she's white i don't know but that's the vibe it's giving me it's giving me the vibe that she's white and he is a person of color because people because white people and people of color have different attitudes to police that's just a fact it's, we know this so her being naive and believing the police first yeah it says something I understand, I understand that that's annoyance and anger, but first of all, allowing the police into the house and not talking to Jay, she believes the police straight away that his son is a criminal. I wonder if she would feel this way if this was her son. She calls him my Jay, which is interesting, but then she's ready to jump on the police side and accuse him of being a criminal, 
especially when she knows that it's not uncommon for his mom to buy him things. Let's see what the comments say. In the future, you're the arsehole. Yeah, I would think she's the arsehole too, not gonna lie. In the future, do not talk to the police. Get a lawyer and only talk to them with your lawyer present. You should not have allowed them in without a warrant. Yes. You should not have allowed them either yourself or your stepson to talk to them without a lawyer. Also, yes. You really should not have allowed your stepson to talk to police without one or the other of his parents being there. Shut the fuck up Friday is a thing for a reason. Yeah, I would say so too. We know how the police can be. And especially if he's a, if he's a person of colour, we know how they are towards people of colour. So she is she was, was naive. Just to be clear, Jay was accused of a crime and not convicted of one. So for you to assume he's a criminal automatically would bother me too if that was my son. Yep, I hear it. Plus, you don't know the exact circumstances as to how the console was obtained. His mom could have bought it from a third buyer. Ooh, for all you know. So again, who are you to call a 16-year-old a criminal when you just made the assumption based on what the police told you? You filled you in a big way. Sorry, you're the arsehole. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Another one. You're the arsehole. Never, 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 never <laughs> let the police into your house without a warrant. Never let the police talk to a minor child without you or your lawyer present. That's just facts that's just basic nah you should have known better you definitely never let the police into your home without a warrant you figure out what they want and don't tell them anything and get a lawyer if necessary you do not even know if the gaming system was actually stolen you do not know if they bought it from a friend who stole it if his mom stole it if he found it etc the cops could be wrong and now your stepson was arrested because you weren't cautious Hopefully, that's a lesson learned. If anything, you're the arsehole only because you turn into an argument with your husband about how your stepson is a criminal. That's also brazy. If I was a husband, I would be so pissed. Your husband was obviously scared, stressed, didn't know what was happening to his son and why. He also trusted you to take care of him and you had a minor in your care. You don't let anyone in the house that doesn't have a good reason to be there, even the cops. It seems you have a skewed perception on your stepson, which is unfortunate. I mean, I didn't want to say it. They said it. She didn't put anything about talking to the stepson and finding out what happened, which is... Which is questionable. Very questionable. Yeah, I would say she's the arsehole. For sure. For sure. Am I the arsehole for telling my mother-in-law and sister-in-law to not stick their noses in my marriage and, and mind your goddamn business? Let's find out. I, 23-year-old female... <laughs> bit young, if you ask me. When I see those young couples... I start to feel a bit on edge because I've heard, I've seen so many terrible stories, but let's let's dig in and find out. So I, 23 year old female, married my husband Josh, 26 year old male, two years ago. He works at his family's company with his dad. One month one month ago, I gave birth to her beautiful daughter Sarah. My mother in law is very religious and old school, and even made a huge fuss when we decided to live in our own home when we married. Where else would they live? What the fuck? Last week, we were supposed to stay three nights because they were meeting at the company. My husband asked me if I was willing to go and I said yes. My mother-in-law got two rooms ready. My, husband, my husband's room for him, another room for me and the baby. Josh asked why. My mother-in-law said, well, you have to get up early tomorrow and the baby won't let you sleep. My husband said that it was not needed and we could sleep together like always. In the evening, me and Josh went to bathe Sarah. Mother-in-law said, that it was inappropriate for Josh to bathe Sarah because she's a girl. That's really fucking creepy already. What the fuck? That's his father. But okay. While having dinner, Josh took Sarah from me so I could eat. And brother-in-law commented on how helpful Josh was. The wife of brother-in-law commented, usually moms do this, whatever. So sister-in-law doesn't like me because I've never been like them. While sister-in-law and brother-in-law still live with the mother-in-law and father-in-law. Okay, interesting. Finally, we went to bed and Sarah woke up in the middle of the night. Josh woke up and said he'd take care of her. A few minutes later, mother-in-law and sister-in-law stomped into my room and said, Wake up, Sarah is crying. I said, Josh is taking care of her. And she said, Aren't you the mother? Josh has a meeting in the morning. Then Josh came into the room with Sarah asleep and told mother-in-law and sister-in-law to leave. When we woke up at 7, Sarah was gone. Me and Josh ran downstairs and mother-in-law had taken Sarah to the garden. I ran in tears and got my baby. And mother-in-law said, well, all you do is sleep. Josh told mother-in-law she should have let us know even if it's just with a note. At the breakfast table, mother-in-law and sister-in-law both commented on how I let my husband do everything. I snapped and said, well, I didn't make this baby alone. The father is right there and parenting is done by both parents. Duh. If needed, 
he will be sleepless he will feed her bathe her and dress her josh doesn't mind helping out so why is it any of your concern you should ask yourselves what are you doing in the room of a married man without even knocking on the door instead of commenting on how bad of a mom i am exactly tell them again i told sister-in-law if you know it so much better go fucking make your own child keep your noses out of my marriage and mind your goddamn business i left the table and josh came with me and told me to pack my bag and we should go home we have two workers in our home who live with us and help us with everything josh brought me home went to the meeting and came back he even apologized for taking me there when he knew his mother my phone has been blowing up with you're the arsehole message from people husband sister-in-law brother-in-law and my family are on my side father-in-law doesn't pick sides and sister-in-law mother-in-law and very religious old school family and friends are blowing up my phone so am i the asshole absolutely not why are they in your business why are they so having a business that's the thing with some religious people they don't know how to mind their own fucking business even if it's not how you would do things or how things work for you why are you trying to control how things work for other people the husband doesn't mind her son doesn't mind her son is happy to happy the way things are running in his family so why do they care so much so nosy i want to put their business and their nose in everyone's business and i do not understand goodness gracious she's just like me for real because i would have left too let's look at the comments not the arsehole you have a solid marriage and your husband stands up for you don't worry about other people they are likely just jealous that part that part or showing this entire separate way of doing things threatens the deep rooted belief that theirs is the best way. Some people do anything to prove that they're not in the wrong. It's just crazy because why do you care? Why do you care? She's I, I'm even happy for her because she has an amazing husband who helps. You know the amount of women complaining that their husbands don't help. I'm really happy for her in the situation. Fuck them both. I don't, yeah, she just shouldn't let them get to her head. Block them all and keep it stepping until they're ready to apologize because this is crazy. Not the asshole. Thank goodness for Josh. Heavy on this part. Thank goodness for a supportive helpful husband it's good that you're both setting boundaries now while sarah is tiny because it's clear that they're going to have ongoing issues with your parenting and she will end up being criticized by them and feeling hurt and confused sadly i suspect you're going to end up being distant from his family but that's the fault of their actions not yours egg zach lee we see she commented on this we live in a very big city they live on one end and we are on the other side it's a one hour drive without traffic. I don't see them much anyways. Josh sees his brother and dad at work almost every day. So I do like father-in-law and brother-in-law. They're not judgmental. Hello. I love Josh and he knows that I am not comfortable around mother-in-law and sister-in-law. Which is why he always asks me if I want to visit or not before saying yes or no to them. Oh, I love this for her. A supportive husband. We love to see it. They are going to extend the company and Josh is considering taking over the other building which is close to our home. And that way he's closer to us and he doesn't have to be in a comfortable situation like this. I am so happy for her. Definitely not the arsehole. We don't even need to read anymore. I really wanted to find a conflicting one or an arsehole one. And I think I might have. So let's read and find out. Am I the arsehole for wanting my girlfriend to pay rent and utilities to live in my house? Let's find out. Well, both women so no sexist comments. We currently live separately and are talking about moving in together, except we've hit a snag. She rents and pays roughly 3000 in rent, utilities and insurance. I outright own my house that my brothers gave me as a graduation gift. My utilities, insurance and property tax is roughly 2.5 a month. She makes about 50000 a year while I make 300000 a year. Whoa. All this accumulated into an argument we're currently in. I asked her to pay $1,250 a month when she moves in to cover the cost of living here. I thought that was a gener I thought that was a reasonable request since there will be two people living here and that's half of my cost. She disagrees and thinks it's unreasonable since I incurred these costs whether or not she lives with me. I asked her what she thought was fair and her first answer was she shouldn't have to contribute anything since the house was in my name and she doesn't have ownership. Ooh. That led to an argument until she relented and offered to pay based on her on our income. Since I make six times her salary, she said the only fair thing is for her to pay one sixth of the rent. So roughly four hundred a month. I thought this was unrealistic, but she argued that it's fair since I don't even need her money because I don't have a mortgage and make so much more. I love her. I never thought money would be an issue, but here we are. What do you think? 
this is a tricky one um actually no it's not you're an asshole you don't love her or you don't see a future with her and capitalism is rotting everyone's brain next now i'm joking obviously but this is someone that is your girlfriend you guys are moving in together so it's kind of getting serious you guys are trying to build a life together a future together so why should she be paying that much especially when she makes much so much less than you yeah i would say you're the arsehole here let's see what other people think all i can say is if i love someone and made six times what they made made i wouldn't be asking that right if you claim to love this girl and you're taking it seriously and you want to move in together surely you wouldn't want her to be paying that much especially when you make so much more than her like come on be for real like do you even like this woman <laughs> exactly you aren't interviewing a roommate you're moving in with someone you're supposedly love and of course everyone does the finances differently but asking someone to pay half of that income disparity come on the story's bought anyways am i supposed to believe that girlfriend is paying three thousand six hundred a month in rent and makes 50k a year either up doesn't know the partner's finances well or they're terrible at making up stories you know what that's a good point as well because that's a lot of money in rent to be already paying when she doesn't make that much um a year but maybe she's just struggling we don't we don't know yes see we so someone else pointed out the the rent and her salary while she makes 3k a month sorry while she pays 3k a month on a 50k per year salary that's nuts not sure how that's even possible i think her proposal of 400 is fair to be honest yeah exactly if you guys are planning to build a life together that makes sense considering your income maybe 650 we a compromise yeah the salary um and the month rent doesn't make sense in the first place but if it's true i think you are the arsehole here because this is supposed to be someone you care about and someone you love you don't need her money anyways do you know what i mean you make six times what she makes that's crazy let's read another comment the last comment i don't know if my girlfriend who made 50k a year wanted to move into my house i own outright and i made 200k i likely wouldn't even make her pay that said i think paying based on income is extremely fair for a loved one especially when you consider your ratio of this questionary income is much larger than one to six i do wonder how she could afford 3k in rent though that's another thing i'm gonna go with you the arsehole right and she didn't even buy the house not to mention the house was given so she didn't even buy it yeah you're the arsehole here i think her offering a compromise of 400 a month is more than fair but you didn't pay for this house yourself you make so much more money than her and she doesn't even own ownership in the house but you guys are trying to move in together and build a life together and you wanted to be paying that much you don't love her this woman you do not love this woman you are the arsehole here sorry to break it to you okay so i found another pretty interesting one Am I the arsehole for not allowing my neighbours to make a copy of my apartment key? Let's find out. So I recently moved into my new apartment complex less than 60 days ago. There are only four units in my complex. Two downstairs, two upstairs. I reside downstairs in the second apartment. Everyone there has lived there for at least five years, while the oldest resident has been there for eight. Everyone knows each other and has been good friends with each other for a long as each other has been a resident. Everyone in the building has children besides me. Majority are single mothers. I am the only man. Apparently, there is an unspoken agreement I at first had no knowledge of between the rest of the tenants that the hallway door is to never be locked. No one ever locks the hallway door. That is until I arrived. For my knowledge, no one in the building has a hallway key, just the key to their apartment. The cost to replace the key is $70 for each quoted from my landlord. I just finished up my place and have officially moved in for about three weeks now. E each time I leave and come back from my complex, I always lock the hallway door. It's always been a hit to lock all doors behind me. My neighbours that works night shift has arrived home for the last couple of weeks to a locked hallway door, which is a surprise given that the door hasn't been locked for years. Apparently everyone lost their key the first year or so living in the complex. I will hear I will hear continually knocking and banging until someone comes to open the door. The first few nights I was awakened and got up to unlock the door. After the first week I have since stopped and my neighbour will be up to unlock it to let our neighbour in. If my neighbour isn't home or doesn't wake up to come to the door, she will knock and bang on every window and yell until someone opens the door. Yesterday, my neighbour asked I could please leave the door unlocked, given it has always been that way and would like me to continue doing so. I expressed that while we live in a dangerous neighbourhood, rated one of the top five dangerous in our city, 
it feels more safe knowing strangers can't enter the building. While she understood my concern, she assured me that no one ever comes here but residents and invited neighbours and my safety is not to worry. I had to beg to differ. She then asked would I mind lending her my hall key so she could make a copy and let others make their own copy for her. I politely declined because I wasn't comfortable with that. She offered to pay me to make a copy myself, in which I also declined. For the past week, my neighbours have barely spoken to me. We usually tell each other good morning and chat a little or say hi or bye, but, ev but not even that these nowadays. My neighbours who volunteer at food banks in our community would come by with goodies and share with everyone in the complex. She has since knocked on my door to deliver a box as she usually would every Wednesday. I don't care for the food, but for the change in this routine led me to believe that I have set the rest of the tenants. I honestly don't want any bad blood. Yeah, I would say you are the arsehole here. Because if the key is just for the hallway and it's not for your your apartment specifically, it doesn't kill you to let her make a copy. Especially because she needs she works night shifts and she needs to come home. You know? And if it's if it's too expensive for her to replace the key. And this is the way they've always done it. Like, if you want to join the neighborhood community, it makes sense to be a bit more flexible. I would say you're the arsehole here. Because them having the key doesn't change anything to do with you. It doesn't change anything. Yeah, it doesn't change anything. I, yeah, definitely the arsehole. Let's see what other people think. So my understanding is that it's a communal hallway leading to individual apartment entrances and the doors to the individual apartments can be locked. I don't understand why you wouldn't let them copy your hallway key, if that's the case to be honest. It costs like three or five dollars. Barring clarification, you're the arsehole. Exactly. It doesn't like it doesn't take anything away from you. It's literally just so she can get in at night because she can't be banging on windows every fucking night. That's not fair. Is is that lack of sense of community? Because she understood your point about not wanting to keep it open because you live in a dangerous neighborhood. But how was she supposed to get in? And if it's a dangerous neighborhood, don't, would you want her to be outside banging on doors late at night? That's that's gonna draw attention to your apartment complex. So you do, would you want that instead? It doesn't make any sense. Not only some high security keys can be expensive, but it doesn't matter as he's not being asked to pay for it. Exactly, she's even paying. She's even asking to pay to make the copy. You're the arsehole. You live in a dangerous neighborhood and you're making your female neighbor trapped outside at night, aren't participating in letting them in despite knowing you locked them out and refuse them to get a copy of a communal key, even though they are happy to pay for it. Yeah, you suck. I agree. He's a terrible person. I'm so sorry. It's actually really mean, come to think of it. That poor woman. If they pay you for a copy, then I don't really see an issue. It's $70 for the landlord to do it, so it will be cheaper if you do it for everyone if you want that community and connection then you have to give a little to get a little back exactly like there's a lack of community if you want to be part of the community they formed here and you want it to be good good blood with everyone you kind of have to contribute to the community so yeah you are definitely the arsehole what the fuck you're the arsehole yeah you caused by blood you declined every solution possible just get the key copied and have them pay you it cost a few dollars and goodwill will mean you don't have with your neighbors I wonder what he's responded to these comments. Let me see if he's made any comments. Because that's such a, like, that's such a dickhead thing to do. But he hasn't replied to any of the comments, which is interesting. But yeah, definitely the arsehole. You moved into a new complex, you're changing things because you feel unsafe. They understood. They want a copy of the key at a cheaper rate because it's really expensive to have it copied. You don't want to leave the door open and you don't want to have to open the door. But what's she supposed to do? Like, be considerate here. Definitely the arsehole. So now I'd say it's time to crown the biggest arsehole of this um, video. And not gonna lie, it's gonna have to go to... Drum roll, please. The arsehole who didn't want his neighbours to make a copy of his apartment key. I'm gonna base this on the fact that the copy of the key is for the hallway, which is communal and not his own apartment. Because if that's the case, an arsehole for absolutely no reason. If it's unsafe, why are you... Why do you feel okay leaving a woman to be banging on doors and drawing attention to herself, trying to get back into her house because she works night shift? That's unfair. She's going to work. She's not going to a party. Do you know what I mean? It's just a dickhead for no complete reason. So yeah, congratulations. You are the biggest arsehole. But yeah, this has been Who is the Biggest Arsehole? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a new series, as I mentioned earlier. Let me know what you guys think of it. Um, do you want to see more of this type of videos? I'm intrigued. Um, I think it could be fun and yeah don't forget to 
share don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe we are almost at the 1k which is fun and yeah i will see you guys in the next one bye